from the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talking Catholic. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Pete Sanchez, along with my co-host, Mike Walsh, and our co-host, Marianela Nunez, the field consultant for Latino enrollment for the Office of Catholic Schools. Marinella, thanks so much for joining us. Bienvenido. Thank you so much for having me one more time. I'm so excited to be here again in this new version of our podcast. Yes. I know for, for anybody who, uh, even though I wasn't introduced as part of the podcast, um, for anybody who... <laughs> Your name, Mike. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Mike. Yes, 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 it is. I don't remember you know, that part. It, don't it's, remember that. it's part of the podcast. Maybe I was so focused on other things, but uh, the reason why we was, I was so focused on other things is because we are, for the first time ever, uh, doing a video recording of this podcast as well. Now, it'll go up at a later date, probably on Monday, uh, after this, uh, the event we're going to be talking about has already gone past. But uh, this is sort of a test of just to see if we can actually make it work properly. And if it does, then when it's appropriate in future years, we will uh, we'll use uh, we'll do it for for future years. But I'm um, very much looking forward to it. And thank you for coming on as our, our test subjects to everyone who will be introduced in a little bit of time. But first, what do we have coming up down the pike? Well, okay. Well, we got the uh, summer mass schedule coming up. The there, you can find this online. So if you're down the shore, uh, I'll be in Cape May this weekend. Uh, I don't know, Mike, Marinella, are you two traveling anywhere this weekend down the shore? Oh, well, uh, let's see. I'll be going shore adjacent since I'm going to the the tournament that we're going to be talking about shortly. Wonderful. Which is in uh, Richland, which is not too far away from the shoreline. But otherwise, well, I don't think there. I'll be making it down there. Yeah, that's where I'll be. And Father's Day. So. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Will but you that's... be celebrating Father's Day, uh, mm-hmm. Peter, with your father? I will Dr. Be there. Sanchez? I will be there, and uh, I'm, I requested from my parents. My mother wants me to, uh, I made French toast for them that they really enjoyed a few uh, weeks ago. So my de- mom said, hey, can you make French toast again? So I said, sure. I'll go to, go to their house and uh, be a nice breakfast. And You're going to be a nice son, right? Or Father's Day. That's why I'm and making always. breakfast, so I will be, need to get back in their good graces. Okay. Very but, good. Um, so that'll be nice. What about you, Mike? Father's Day? Um, actually, it was. It's funny. My my wife was asking me uh, yesterday, uh, what what should we do for Father's Day? To which my response was, I don't know. So I, I don't know what we're gonna do. Maybe Jack has a surprise for you. Uh, who knows? Well, who knows? That'd be awfully nice if he did. I don't know. I, I'm figuring out some time to spend uh, with my dad. It'll be my primary focus for Father's Day. But uh, you know, I, I tell people who, who ask me my humble opinion. Uh, what, what do you think she should do for Father's Day? It's always the same thing. Like any father, I just don't want to be hassled for Father's Day. That's all. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't hassle me. Like, uh, if I'm on the recliner, uh, just let me stay there for an extra five minutes. That'll be fine. Come on, take the celebration. It's, it's you know. I we... mean, I appreciate a celebration. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can find, again, the summer mass schedule on uh, camdendiocese.org for all your summer mass schedule needs. So, uh, Marinella, what's coming up? Well, we have to invite you to the 2019 World Refugee Day. Catholic Charities Annual World Refugee Day is coming on June 22nd at Christ Our Light. We're going to be busy in the diocese, like coming up our, with our soccer tournament and then the World Refugee Day next weekend. This is a totally free event where we really celebrate the courage and determination of women and men who, uh, you know, leave their countries of origin and they come here with nothing to just, you know, uh, create a new life. So we invite you to really be part of this beautiful event. Uh, You know, there's fun activities for kids. It's a family event. You should definitely come and join us uh, for this uh, Diocese of Candling event. It's a signature. Come on. Sounds good. Well, I'll I'll try to make that, put that on my calendar and put that on yours, listeners. And then coming up on June 16th, this Sunday, this is awesome, at uh, in Atlantic City, St. Michael Church, Quarimba Hall, uh, off of Georgia Avenue in Atlantic City. Our friends, the Franciscan Sisters of the Renewal, those wonderful, uh, those wonderful devout women, they'll be having a youth holy hour and social for all high school youth groups and teenagers. This is going, and it happens every third Sunday of the month. So if you can't make it this month, uh, put on your schedule for the next uh, third Sunday in July. The afternoon begins at 4 p.m. in the hall behind the church uh, with pizza and fellowship. 
And then there'll be Eucharistic adoration with music and meditations led by the Franciscan sisters and finishing up with benediction at 5.30 p.m. So come on out to Atlantic City, go down the shore, see the great work of the sisters if you're not, uh, if you haven't uh, seen them before. And for more info, call Sister Ann Cattery, 609-343-1545 this Sunday in Atlantic City starting at 4.30. Well, you're so great doing this, Pete. You know, I realized I didn't mention where the World Refugee Day is going to be. It's going to be held at uh, the Parish of Christ Our Light in Cherry Hill from 11 to 2.30 uh, p.m. And also, if you need more information, you can call uh, Samantha at 856-342-4156. And you can also look it up on our website. Um, so... Yeah. Well, that's good. To, yeah, all of them are on KimnaDicey.org. Thank yeah. you, Mary Nella. Of course. So also we have the ninth annual mass uh, of wel- welcome and reception for the Haitian farm workers. This is going to be on Friday, the twenty first. Uh, we would have Eucharistic celebration at six p.m. followed by the reception at Columbia Road, Hamilton, New Jersey. This is a fun day, and we really want to um, celebrate our farm workers and especially the Haitian community, which are really part of our diocese so i'm excited i will be there i'm very much hoping to to make it there i haven't been to one yet and everyone that i know who has been to to this farm workers mass uh has always told me how amazing it is so i really i really hope to make it matter of fact by show of hands how many people have been to the haitian farm workers mass in the room right now all right one of them we're gonna have to talk to when uh, he gets introduced a little later okay yeah and Uh i think and, and watch out for the blueberries mike Blueberry, right? Yes, That's right. Because I am allergic, I could die field. at any time. It's That's gonna right. be it's gonna be celebrated in Creole and English. So if yep. you want to have an experience of different yeah. uh, field mass, mm-hmm. please join us uh, for this. And you know, I don't know if I could make it to this one, but I really am interested in in joining this event for well, the future. It's, yeah, it's normally held at the same time every year. So yeah, on your calendar, twelve months from now, Marinella, uh, you know, I think you should come. Columbia Fruit Farms. So, <laughs> and then what else we got coming up? Um, well, do you want to make a mark this summer? And this is talking to um, high school students. Uh, if you want to join us for the Summer in the City program, which is a very dynamic service learning experience focused on social justice, community, and spirituality, where teens uh, will really learn about the Catholic social teachings, hands-on ac- activities, and community service, uh, and in conversation about you know poverty and the dignity of the human person and how to be uh, solidary. Uh, what is the word, Pete? I'm missing it. Solidarity. solidarity. How to be what? Soli- Soli- how to be in, in solidarity with uh, oh you others. see you see we don't have that in we yeah. have a word in spanish for that actually okay. so i was like i'm blushing i can't even think of you what know solidarios solidarios aprender a ser solidarios Gracias. si quieren aprender a ser solidarios <laughs> Oh, I bien. love it when Marinella breaks out the Spanish when she's on the podcast. Oh. Igualmente, <laughs> yeah. igualmente. So this is going to be where? The Metro Atlantic City area during the August session uh, while staying at the Kairos Retreat Center next to the Holy Spirit High School. And who? We invite teens in grades from 9 to 12. Uh, it's going to be Sunday, August 11, Saturday, um, and then it's going to go through August the 17th uh, at the Short in Atlantic City. So the cost is $160, and it includes room, board, program, tuition, and transportation to and from work sites. Scholarships are available. So if you don't have the money to go, please uh, call, and uh, you can get more information at the www.candendiocese.org, Youth Ministry, Summer in the City, or contact Youth Ministries at Five eight three twenty nine zero eight. Greg Coogan. Thank you so much. No, that sounds exciting. Summer in the city is always a good time. I uh, hope uh, I hope youth avail themselves of that opportunity to go. And coming up, uh, more. This is really cool. The U.S. bishops are actually having a uh, religious freedom week, which is taking place from June twenty second to the 29th each year, beginning with the feast day of St. Thomas More and John Fisher. So uh, the USCCB, basically this will be uh, 
They'll be providing pray, reflect, and act documents, one for each day on different religious liter- li- religious liberty topics uh, to help individuals learn more about religious liberty from a Catholic perspective, pray about these particular issues, and act on what they learn whether it's by finding ways for their parish to serve the community or maybe even call their members of Congress to promote legislation supporting religious liberty. And this year's theme is Strength in Hope. So for more information, go to usccb.org. Again, this is coming up June 22nd through the 29th Religious Freedom Week. That's great, yeah. Pete, remember, we are on camera, so if we keep our papers, people won't see us. Thank this is a new well. version. That's true. <laughs> this is why you're here. This is why I'll just keep it. Um, the uh, I need to get better glasses, I think. That's a problem. Uh, and then this is really cool. The Justice for All Dinner will once again be held in Atlantic City, this time on October 3rd with fellow honoree Cardinal Luis Antonio Tale, the Archbishop of Manila and the President of the Caritas Internationalis. He is a larger-than-life international driving force of justice, compassion, and care for all the afflicted worldwide. And this dinner benefits the work of Catholic charities here in this diocese and since its beginning in 2004 has raised $1 million. Every penny of this has been used for direct client services to assess the poorest and most vulnerable here in South Jersey. And for uh, this is the question I'm going to, uh, the organizations looking for Disciples of Mercy is if there's an individual group or ministry in your parish that goes above and beyond in putting Catholic social teaching into action, let the committee know. You can nominate them for recognition as a Disciple of Mercy. So, and, uh, and, you know, let me, I'll just break in right there. The um, It's... That is something we don't get enough of. I've been part of the JFA now for three or four years, I think, at this point. And um, and we always have wonderful candidates who end up being our um, awardees for the day, uh, for the evening. But um, we, we actually don't get – I was always thinking we would get a ton of applications for, for people. Because, I, I, I mean, you and I and all of us have been out in the diocese on a regular basis, and we see all the great work being done out there by – by lay individuals, um, all of whom would, would certainly fall under the auspices of a disciple of mercy within the uh, within the diocese, and I would really like to see more uh, nominees comes through. So, if you know someone in your in your um, in your area who is a deserving person who who does great work in the community to particularly people who uh, to lift up other people, um, no matter what that situation is. I hope you'll consider uh, submitting their names to the, the JFA um, committee to, uh, to be considered. Um, it's great. All, all that information rela- related to the, um, to the uh, Justice for All Disciples of Mercy are all on the same, we- on the same uh, Catholic Charities webpage, so you can follow, find all that information together. So I really hope people will, uh, will reach out and... Yeah. Is and that- and, and, and nominate people in their community. Yeah, on Catholic Charities Camden. Remember, like that's the theme for like uh, the convocation. We're gonna create missionary disciples, mm-hmm. and I know that we have a lot of those in our diocese. So we yeah. encourage you to um, tell us if you are. But if you like want to nominate somebody. Um, go ahead and find out the information you need to send out. And and don't be afraid if, uh, you know, you know that person doesn't like recognition. Well, sometimes it's important, even if they don't like recognition, that they be seen because it, they raise up, you know, the, the image of Catholics in our community who are actually doing good work. It's it's a good thing for these uh, hard workers to, to be recognized from time to time, even if they don't think they're deserving of it or they're not particularly inclined to be like that. Certainly nobody does what we do for the recognition that we might get from it. We do it because the the service is needed but at the same time it's good for the rest of the community to see that service in action and to see those people being honored so i i really hope that, that we'll see a lot of nominations come through this year yeah yeah i think i think there are too many good people working in this diocese for not to be a lot of nominations yeah perfect so was, so, is that our last uh, that thing? Is our oh last my goodness new, gracious! That is we our ran last through, news. yeah. Quickly. So then, then for the purposes of the uh, the video, people who are who may or may not be watching right now, um, why on earth is somebody wearing a soccer jersey right now? Jose Jose Rodriguez, coordinator of Hispanic Ministries and Youth and Young Adult Ministries, uh, can you answer why why are you wearing this Iglesia San Judas soccer jersey? There's a purpose. There is a purpose. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> wow, Mary Nell gave up the mics sooner than I thought she would. All right. <laughs> this is working out well. 
Mike, Pete, thanks for having me on again. Marinella, Claudia. Um, thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks. Uh, soccer jersey. I am wearing the soccer jersey of San Judas or the Church of St. Jude's uh, because this Saturday, this Saturday, we have our first um, inaugural diocesan soccer tournament. So it's uh, the Diocese of Camden Soccer Cup um, where we have teams coming from all over the diocese um they're going to ballot it out for this for this soccer cup um and it's a direct response to the quinto encuentro we you know, you guys remember we've brought that up before um and people really showed up registrations came in flying through the door and then kicks off on kickoff i don't know if i can use that though that's related to football but we are talking about football we are talking about football yeah. and they do kick in so, football so i think it would be fine <laughs> kickoffs right? on saturday so so let's back up a couple steps and introduce our, our other guests so claudia um ha- first of all who are you and second of all um you know can you explain a little bit more about how the the soccer tournament is sort of an extension of the the fifth encuentro Hi. First of all, thank you for having me today. I'm very um, happy to be with you guys. I, your friends from a long time now, thanks mm-hmm. to many activities that we've been doing together. Um, my first friend, Marianella from the Quinto Encuentro, <laughs> and Jose from the I Quinto Encuentro. <laughs> <laughs> I know Pete. Thank you for um, you know many events that you've been covering throughout the years in the um, diocese, and my recent most. You know, new trusted, friend, trusted. Most, most important um, person in your life after your husband. Sure, cor- I understand. That. Cor- <laughs> <laughs> Same I agree field, completely. communication. So we've been working since the convocation. I'm very happy about it. So my That's name right. is Claudia, Claudia Trani Melgar. And i coming from uh, St. Clair of Assisi Parish all the way in Switzerland, Gibson, and Paulsboro. I've been uh, coordinating the uh, communications department, recently coordinating that. And before that, I was doing the uh, coordination for the Hispanic ministry. So one of the requests or needs from the community was how could we include our young people uh, into our activities, our church activities, uh, so they we can evangelize, but they, we can also have fun at the same time. Uh, so many, many ideas came along, and one of the things was, uh, how about if we include a sport as part of an evangelization? And you may wonder like how do we do that we're kicking a ball we're playing we do that and when the evangelization come out so the quinto encuentro was to go and encounter people where they are that was the primerear what is to go first that is a translation from uh, pope francis so we did that and let me tell you, I know about soccer and football because I'm from Bolivia. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I have to put that in there. And we, um, we have uh, you know, a big tradition in Latin America about soccer. So when you get here to the States and you find out that football is not football, it's soccer, um, it's like a big cultural shock, you know, I want football. So uh, once you pass that line and you uh, start loving the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> As you should, that's right. As you should. And um, we figure out the, the best way to motivate people to uh, be part of any activities that we do is to go and find them where they are. And we found players. And these players are eager to uh, put their time into a good service. So at St. Clair, we have a team, Angels and Saints. And we're very excited about this uh, the soccer tournament that will be on June 15, Saturday, coming up. So that's, that's what we are excited about. And, you know, maybe we need to go back one, even one more step because we've talked about the fifth encuentro or Quinta Encuentro? Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Marinella, you don't have a mic, so you have to steal it back from uh, Jose. That's I'm surprised you didn't steal it faster. <laughs> the, um, He's trying to be prudent. <laughs> very nice. That's very good. It's nice of you to share. That's very kind of you. The um, So I'm curious, you know, not curious, I know what it's about, but could you explain to listeners who may not remember or may have forgotten or may not have heard what exactly the fifth Encuentro was? Wow. Um, so basically, you know, this this uh, was a long um, process of uh, sort of like discernment and conversation within uh, the Latino community. Where and not, and not only that, we also included you know our Anglo community in our multiple churches in the diocese of Camden, where we sort of like um, 
talked about what are the needs and how can we better serve the Latino community in the Diocese of Canning in our particular communities and also at the national level. So um, we, uh, Claudia and I, and I and Jose as well, we're part of the national um, delegation that went with Bishop Sullivan. And, you know, one of the, the main uh, priorities that we found, not only in our diocese and, and many of our communities, was uh, basically the youth. We wanted to make sure that uh, we include the youth in everything we do in our church. And what an exciting way to do it than with this uh, soccer tournament. And so uh, this is what we're doing. We're trying to respond to the need. And, and youth was number one priority in the nation and so also in the diocese of canon so we are addressing that need you want to i think jose can contribute to that question as well oh she gave the mic back that's awesome <laughs> that is <laughs> i wasn't prepared wow when, no. i knew i was coming on with claudia and and, and marianela i didn't think i'd have to talk as much um <laughs> but no i i think you said i think you hit the nail on the head and everything you're right this was it's direct response to the need. So we kept hearing that young people were looking for relationships and, and peer-to-peer ministry. Um, where are their peers at? If the peers aren't in school or working, they're on the they're on the they're either the soccer fields or the baseball. They're in sports. So uh, we came together as a team and we thought about what was the best way that we can reach to our young people. What is the best way that we can bring Christ to them alive and, and not just uh, inside um, the four walls of the church, but bring church out and bring church to people that were looking. So uh, we invited our parishes. When we sent out the information for the soccer tournament, we invited them to evangelize. We sent out uh, the 10 best practices for evangelization. Don't just look for players within your church, but go out into your community. Invite the young people that are in the church. Tell them to bring their friends. And that was a lot of the registrations that we received may not be young people that are necessarily there on every Sunday basis, but they are friends of those young people that are there, and they're there, and they're coming to play. So, um, again, like Claudia was saying, it was the, the day is not just about soccer, but there's going to be prayer, and there's going to be worship, and and blessings, and um, interaction. We're going to invite the young people to talk to one another, get to meet other people, um, and I, I don't think it could get any harder to pray for somebody who's wearing an opposite jersey from you, but we're going to invite them <laughs> to, you know... Yeah, I don't know if I've ever sure. done that. Pray together, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it, it'll, be, well, it'll no, be an experience. We never pray for the team, but we always pray for the other players. I have routinely prayed for, you know, one player to be slower than my favorite player. Routinely <laughs> <laughs> prayed. I love that. <laughs> yes, I routinely pray for it. my team to be beat the other team. I think there's, there's something to that sportsmanship. Speaking of that, yesterday at the Stanley Cup Finals, St. Louis Blues won, and I don't remember ever seeing, I don't see this too often where the St. Louis celebrated and Boston was there still on the ice, and they formed the line and said, good game, good game, good game. They do that every Stanley Cup, no matter where they, they are. Yep, every single one. They uh, And they do it at the end of every playoff run. So like at the end of like at the divisional, the quarters, or, or the semis, or something mm-hmm. like that. That's one of the, that's one of the truly great things about... Um, about uh, hockey is yeah. that they, there's a sense of camaraderie amongst the players themselves. That's that, nice. That they'll fight it out, and then even at the end of the tournament, they'll they'll yeah. 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 Blue after the game yesterday. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I understand. Jose told me, Marinella and Claudia, you two are MCs for this event, right? Yes, yes we, we are. are. Oh my gosh! So oh my. What is that? Are you that going is... to be the announcers? Are you going to call the action? I'm just going to be honest right here. I'm not a soccer fan, but and I don't know much about soccer. So bear with me, people, as you go. And I may say home run instead of goal. <laughs> but Claudia will keep me on track because she's from Bolivian. They do have like soccer teams. <laughs> well, I will say that um, I'm proud of the, my Bolivian heritage. But um, maybe soccer is not our best friend as Bolivians. But we are next to Argentina and Brazil. <laughs> so just thank that you for that. Kind of, you know, gives you a little bit of perspective on uh, soccer. So. Uh, the MCs are supposed to support uh, each team that it's going to be uh, playing and mostly uh, making uh, the day feel like a party. So we have also Ooh, I think been we can in do that. charge of trying to select what kind of music is going to go, uh, what activities we're going to be announcing. So it is a learning experience, but I have, like I say, here Marianella and I, we're going to do we our work well best. together. So. Um, this is going to be a a test for you viewers and listeners 
uh, if there's any song that you would like to, uh, you know, hear play at the, to uh, the uh, tournament, um, you know, you can go online and find uh, Talking Catholic and send some names of songs. We'll be looking out for that because we're trying to put that list together and we want to make sure we have good music. Mm -hmm. So if you want to participate, we encourage you to go on our website. You know, I'm curious, what is the agenda for the day? I, I understand it goes from like 830 to 5, right? So what is going to be happening during the day is we going to have all the teams playing. We have eight teams. Uh, they're going to be playing with each other at least two times. We going to have elimination throughout the day. Yeah. And uh, while they're playing, we have also uh, activities for the people that is on attendance. So we have an activity uh, for the uh, children, all the teenagers, that they can be um, face painting, balloons. Uh, they're going to be uh, free Latino, typical Hispanic lunch. So, how for is those that? of you who don't get the opportunity very often, <laughs> Mike, Mike, Pete. I, I can't wait. That's, Pete and Mike, you that will was have actually the my delicious lunch. It's free. Oh that God. was actually my next question: is uh, what's on the menu? So, <laughs> so very, very much looking forward to it. Very traditional oh. Hispanic food uh, made of. Uh, from one of the uh, faithful parishioners. We know her for a long time. She has a very she good- She cooks well. Uh, you know, tradition of delicious food uh, for any event that we do. And- Arroz con frijoles? Arroz con gandules. Arroz con guandules. And uh, pernil. Pernil is pork. Y pollo. Sí. Y ensaladita verde. <laughs> you got that? Me gusta pollo. <laughs> Green salad. <laughs> you going to be? You going to be surprised? But again, for the players, we want them to come uh, to the uh, eight thirty uh, star having eating some breakfast and ready to play because hydration throughout the day it's going to be yeah. very very important. Quick That's correction, right. Claudia. They have to be present by eight a.m. Um, because we're going to be doing the team registra re registrations for those uh, in Spanish, inscripciones de los equipos a las 8 de la mañana, 8 a.m. So make sure you get there on time to uh, get your team registered. So when after the um, elimination, uh, we forgot to mention that we also have uh, three teams um, uh composed by girls. Mm -hmm. So we have girls playing and they also going to be playing with each other, uh, against each other, and we going to have a first and second and third place for them. And we are very excited. So if you are a girl, si tu eres una muchacha, and you love soccer, and you are over 18 years old, show up that day, we still can put another team together and or be part of any of these teams we are more than you know inviting you to come so how about that jose jose uh, you do that better no. than me or maybe i just okay. i just That'll broke the rule i there. think she has just created trouble oh, so i hate to be the bearer of bad news um we can add some players we can add a couple of players to the teams that we have but as far as composing uh new teams uh registration is closed <laughs> claudia <laughs> jose uh, we are all about including welcoming yes um, all right the ones that there can show up and have their team maybe we can just be cheering from the side i will be one of them yeah, how about that like <laughs> you know those Vuvuzelas yes are, that have? yeah from are there going to be those uh, if you bring them, Pete. Really? Oh, so we encourage you to bring anything that would make you happy that day. Blankets, chairs, like, you know, uh, any games that you may want to play with your kids or like, you know, just on your own when you're there. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a fun day and we expect you to um, just enjoy yourself when you're there. Okay. Oh, that's, and, and there's something to that. Soccer. I've gone in the past couple of years really appreciate this game. And it seems to be soccer or football, as it's known, around the Excellent world. Excellent pronunciation, yes. Yes. Football. Football right. is around the world is the most popular sport. In the United States, the other football is more popular. But I've really come over the past couple of years to uh, really uh, enjoy the passion and the pride that individuals have. I went to a game a few years ago at uh, Lincoln Financial Field. It was the Philadelphia Union um, here in, uh, they, nor they normally play in Chester. 
PA, but they played at the link and they played what they call a friendly game, kind of like an exhibition against Real Madrid, who has, who had at the time the best player in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo, mm-hmm. who's well known. And from what, uh, from what Maria D'Antonio just said, it has the most Instagram followers of anybody in the entire world. So he is a popular presence, a popular uh, personality. But this game was incredible. The place was filled to the gills with fans, with shirts, you know, with your shirt, but they had the Union or the uh, Real Madrid. The fandom is incredible. And even you see now, I love it how you're doing this now when the United States women are in the World Cup and they just beat uh, Thailand 13 to nothing. And they're they're quite amazing. Yeah, there will be two cups in these tournaments. So, like, you know, women will have one and the men as well. So we're really excited and uh, looking forward to see if this is something that Jose can pull together for next year. Who knows, right? I I have faith in Jose. Although, uh, just going back to Cristiano Ronaldo, I kind of wonder if there's another reason why he has the most followers on Instagram. He's cute, too. (laughs) Yes, as I recall, he's also um, uh, Greek godlike in his his look, yes. I would not be shocked if most of his followers are... Girls. Yes. They're not soccer fans or football fans? They might not even know that he plays soccer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I would agree with that, Mike. Yes. I I even know the name. (laughs) (laughs) The non soccer fan news exactly <laughs> my point being but anyway my belief is yeah the, the award ceremony is not going to be until like uh 4 15 p.m so um you know be ready to stay around like for a whole day of celebration and you know a lot of sweating and sports you know feel you know feel fit that day you know wear your sneakers oh. and you know make some do some exercise right Pete? and you said That's bring a chair cool. with them too if they need a, yes, to bring, bring a chair. folding chairs or Welcome and blankets and okay. anything that makes you feel comfortable and, you know, be ready for a full day. But don't you... come unless you are already registered or else feel the wrath of Jose. You can't, you okay. as a team, but, you know, people are welcome to, to okay. come. Yeah, that's good. So and that means gonna... if Pete brings some orange slices, he can come out and play too? Yes, I was just, <laughs> I honestly br- almost brought orange slices <laughs> Not here. Not sure. But I was thinking, no, no orange slices? Yeah. You can bring orange slices. That's you can I, bring orange slices. No, the whole thing about orange slices is when I played intramural at Queen of Heaven School, elementary school, we had uh, orange slices after every game. And I don't know. I just when I think of soccer, I think of orange slices. Why? Because that was the Mike. No, no, the, it was the same thing. Even when I was growing up, it was the same deal. I was in soccer for a couple of years as well, and um, and after every game, that was the snack. I don't know why it was the snack, orange but slices. it was always the snack was to bring orange slices. This is a fir- did they agree on something? I, I know. Uh, wow. that was, that was no, incredible. no, I don't think that was an agreement. Yeah, I think, yeah. that, I think I, no, no, that was just pointing out two similar facts, completely different. No. This is the first time for a lot of things happening, and we got a video going, and we just agreed on something. We got that video, Jose. I'm stumped. It's a good point. For your information, this is being recorded. That's true. Yeah. I'll, don't worry, but I'm the editor. I can edit it all. Out. <laughs> well, and I would say. If you're going to bring orange slices, also bring sunscreen, because I think it's going to be in the 80s on Saturday. Yeah, right? that's a good idea. Maybe an umbrella if you don't like the sun much. Although the temperature doesn't have anything to do with uh, your likelihood of getting burned. It's, it has to do with the sun coming out. You can get, See, you like, get, now that's you can Mike get, and Pete. You can get, you can normal. get, things. <laughs> you can get burned uh, in the wintertime. Of course, yeah. You just have to be careful with the sun, but still, aided. <laughs> no, like, of course, you know, you just had to be contrary in there. First of all, it was a contrary. It's it was nature. accurate. Second of all, it was uh, in response to these people saying that we were agreeing. I can't, I yeah. can't live in a world well, where we agree. I think this is what talking Catholic is about, you know. Bickering Pete and, Catholic? Yeah. yeah you, <laughs> you might be right. The um, So, I, you know, just going back to the actual format of it. So, uh, what are the ages of the people playing? Is it is it kids and adults that no, are so these so so we're we're looking at young adults here so any eighteen to thirty uh, okay. thirty nine oh so Pete could play Pete could play okay um, so could Marianella for that matter I'm yeah good. Yes. hey Claudia thank you I would and, like to play <laughs> uh, well you can't because you're emceeing the both of you <laughs> um, so yeah so we we were looking to really focus on on young adults because what we were seeing and, and so this is the Office of Hispanic Ministry and Office of Youth and Young Adult Ministry working together um got that on camera too <laughs> so 
you know, we were looking at some of the things we've done, and, and, and we do a lot with our young people and a lot with our older people. And we, we, let's, let's, we all sat down together and I said, let's focus on young adults for a little bit. Let's give them something. So this is the one thing that we came together and we thought we'd give them. Uh, Pulled hamstrings, blown out knees, I mean, concussions. Yeah. I appreciate that about that. That's <laughs> Old very enough nice. to play, not old enough where it's going to hurt the next day. <laughs> so... Um, we thought this was going to be a great, you know. Well, you, it is going to it's going to be a great thing, you know, and it's it's bringing that that church together. It's yeah. bringing young adults to see other young adults, um, and not only on the soccer field, but wearing there. So all of our teams, eight eight men's teams, three women's teams, they all went out. They got their own uniforms. Um, and they coordinated it really, really well because I don't have any repeating colors. You know, shout out to St. Jude's. F- uh, fantastic uniforms. Uh, that really is a really nice uniform. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually sad that I didn't sign up just to get the uniform, yeah, even though I'm so, over the age. Uh, so, you know, I I was I was excited. This was the first uniform that came in, the first one I saw, and I was like, wow, the, you know, the pride and So you stole it. it. No, no, okay. no, nope, it's, nope, it's got my name on the back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, it was. When did they give you one? It's about shaking hands and kissing babies, man. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we uh, call that bribery, <laughs> Marinella. No, we went and I walked with their team. And um, one you, of the things we you were out, encountered. With I was them. encountering you with them. We were going, going. We were putting into effect that sheet that we send out to the teams of the ten best ways to evangelize. So. Um, we invited them to to meet with one another, sit down, do some type of formality, a dynamic practice with one another, um, have the their their pastor or their priest present the team at the mass and say this team is going to be representing our parish at the diocesan soccer cup. So they really became a part of the parish. So honestly, this is way bigger than just soccer. You know what I mean? Like it really is a chance for young people to be recognized to be accepted and to be um you know cheered on and and pushed uh with the goal being to win the cup but at the same time you know i got to meet new friends out of this i got to feel a part of the parish people in the parish know my name um i got to meet you know some a lot of our young people don't even know their pastor's name oh father okay father they're all they're all called that which one is I don't know. The, the father. So it's place. It's safe to uh, say that you may be the next Ronaldinho for South Jersey. I don't know who that is. No one knows this either. <laughs> Maybe it's Bolivian. Yeah. I don't know, a Bolivian person. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah. So it's one of the good players too. It's a Brazilian player. If I'm not mistaken, please fans, don't kill me if I'm making it this um, uh, something I, bigger. I've but, heard of him. Uh, so he is also good. Or how about uh, Messi? I, yes. I know who Messi, Messi is. Yeah, I, I use him on Messi. FIFA. Okay. <laughs> on, on. But no, because I won't be playing. I can promise you that I won't be playing. You'll catch me running around that day, but it will not be in. You know, it'll be in those one of those very stylish, bright orange T-shirts that says "Volunteer" on the back. Mm-hmm. So I'll be there doing that. The same. You won't be wearing this. No. no. Oh, who's that? That's why I'm wearing it today because I wanted to show it off today. But this is, you know, this is for my love for St. Jude's um, and, and for all our parishes. You know, I'm hoping that maybe I can grab jerseys from everybody at the end of the day and take some jerseys home. And I'd love to hang them up in the office, mm-hmm. add more to the. Well, I mean, board. for next year, obviously, that you know, you know that when you're putting together the particulars for the event, that an extra jersey must be provided to the diocese in such and such a size, size yeah. with uh, such and such a name and number on the back. Uh, and then you can line your in uh, order for uh, yeah, exactly. in order to have your registrations accepted. That's, I like that's that. That's right. Although most people would say Sullivan, but in your case, maybe not. We said such and such name. Uh, there you go. Could be, could be you know, any name. Could be any name. Think, That's right. I think Rafael Rodriguez is easy to spell. I think you should create. Yeah, you know what? You should totally create a jersey that says Sanchez on the back, and bring it to a certain Catholic. Oh, Catholic. Sanchez. Yeah. I don't know why we would do that. That's. <laughs> you 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 are now officially grifting. They actually are a part of this event. <laughs> <laughs> You can come to the event, Pete, and I will, will give you a St. Clair jersey. How about that? It's uh, Angels and Saints. Now, so, wait a second. Yeah. I actually will be at the event. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there in the morning, and then I have to leave midday because my niece is uh, having a graduation party from high school. Uh, but then I am going to come back for the awards as well. So, Marinella, if I'm running late, 
hold up the award so I get there with my camera. Well, you know, there is, um, you actually have some of the t-shirts that we're going to be wearing, I think. Not exactly the same, but you know the convocation t-shirts we put together? Yeah. They look exactly the same, but with some different logos. And um, there's, I think, a phrase from Pope we, Francis. We, um... So I'll hold one of those okay. for you, Mike. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll Claudia, it is your task and my task to make sure that if Mike is not there for the award ceremony, that we make people stay a little That's bit longer. Right. I, need to, I need to get peop- shots of people holding the cups. We can, we can put together a show. We can make sure that we talk a little bit longer for the <laughs> event ceremony. So don't worry about that, Mike. We have you covered. You're otherwise, part of the team. Otherwise, all I know Jose. what's going to happen is I'm going to get a ton of WhatsApp photos as I'm coming through. Like, Mike, you should be here for this. Although, I have to give you a heads up. It's a Uh-oh. very important soccer game that is um, for the World Cup coming up in you know a long time. Not right now. Um, one of the teams of a lot of your co-workers in here from mm. Colombia. It's going to be playing at the same oh, at time. at the same time. So they may, so they may ditch to go see the game. <laughs> so you better hurry up and get that picture done so the event will be We leave. heard Cover. some of those comments already, so you better be prepared for that, Mike. Okay, you got it. I will be. That's good. Now, you know, looking forward, do you guys have an idea of what – are you looking to grow this for next year? So you even have more teams? Like, like will the format – could you get another eight teams if there were 16 teams? Could, would that work? Yeah, so the idea is, is we always think about what do we, what do we get back? What is, our, what is our return? What is the follow-up? Um, it's bigger than just one day of soccer. Uh, so we're looking for after this, for the same teams that have, that have cultivated in their parishes, the teams that have come together, not to wait for the diocese to do another soccer cup, but to pick up the phone and say, hey, uh, Millennials and Violin, what are you guys doing this Saturday? The Angels and Saints, um, you know, we've been practicing really, really, really hard to be as good as the Millennials, and we want to try that. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's meet together and let's have a game. It's that's the idea is for there to be fellowship amongst them. Now, yes, next year at this time we will be planning on uh, the second annual diocesan soccer cup, and and we're hoping that it could be on a bigger scale, um, and uh, have more teams come in and 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 make it really you know it's going to be a big event already with eight yeah, teams, but yeah. if we could do ten. 12 teams will we'll make it happen no i think that's i think i'm i'm really excited for it i'm very curious to see what's like we've i've i love these diocesan wide events where we can get a lot of people to come out to them and i'm a i love competition so i, I think that's going to be great so i i've always wanted to see you know even our high schools to do like these kinds of cups that were just for diocesan entities i love it when that happens yeah, i'm really excited to see the types of conversations that are ca- that are going to happen amongst players mm-hmm. we have you know like we have some some things that we'll do before each game where we're going to have game coordinators and we're going to ask them to you know have the like i mentioned earlier have the teams meet and talk about their faith what you know what do you, what is it about the faith that you like or mm-hmm. or you know what brought you here today or something like that i'm interested in those conversations yeah. to see where our young adults are at um, and what we can get from this to move forward as a diocesan office. But I'm also really excited for those types of phone calls that happen where it's like, hey, we played each other at the Cup. Uh, you guys want to get together and go bowling this weekend? Mm-hmm. Or you guys want to go catch a movie? This movie came out. I think it would be awesome. Yeah. Um, again, just trying to help foster and build those relationships is really the, really the goal here, no pun intended. <laughs> and I And I would add to that goal, Jose, too, like, you know, it's cool to be Catholic. That's the feel we want to create. And, you know, you can be young, you can be active, you can do all this, these things and sort of like, you know, be Catholic at the same time. Like, you, you don't have to uh, move away from your faith to be the cool young person you want to be. Mm-hmm. And also, um, we're going back to the um, mission and the goal of this. Uh, we in the Quinto Encuentro um, realize uh, the before you get to involve young people, you have to go where they are spending the most time. And as a parent, uh, we take our kids to a sport practice all year round through the school's activities and things like that. And we even hear parents say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna make that church event because we have a tournament to go and something like that. So like Marianella say, how cool is to mix those things together, to put it together for, exciting our young people about 
our church are being Catholic. Uh-huh. And um, our church is a young church, especially if we talk about the Hispanic population in the United States. And that was one of the focus of the Quinto Encuentro, just to throw out some numbers in there. Six out of 10 Catholics in the United States are either Hispanic or a Hispanic descendant. Mm-hmm. And out of those tens, um, I will say 60% are under the age of 30. So that is the future also mm-hmm. of this generation, that if we don't put time into give uh, what their love and evangelize on the way there, we can lose these people. And everybody's talking about losing or we losing people every day, 80% after 13, they don't identify as Catholics. So the goal here, it was to, again, go where they are and find them doing what they love with our mission to evangelize. So this does not only go with the Quinto Encuentro theme, it also goes with, for you, for those of you who remember what we um, experienced last March with the convocation, the joy, the convocation of Catholic leaders, the joy of the gospel in South Jersey, which uh, you know it created tremendous excitement in our diocese. So this is something um, sort of like a reaction to that, like you know, to create that church that goes out to the peripheries as our Pope. Um, let's make our, that word really famous recently, right? Peripheries. <laughs> peripheries. Yeah, yeah. Peripheries. And I can't even say the no. word in English. <laughs> and yet it's still famous. Peripherias. I liked, I liked her, <laughs> I liked her <laughs> version of it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shut up, the contrary. Oh, my God. This is public embarrassment. <laughs> no, no. No. But it's, it's, we did like to help, we just help people along by telling them what they did wrong. That's all. That's, that's, that's all we do. You here. guys are so We're cool. <laughs> With kindness and love as a good Catholic. Always with kindness and love. <laughs> okay. I don't I don't take any joy out of any time I have to correct and every time I have to correct Pete. It's always it's always with, out of love and respect. Well, <laughs> love. Anyway. Well, I will take that this uh, podcast too as a pronunciation class. So you know, I learn for you guys. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, hey, listen, you're going to be doing the the um, Spanish language podcast very soon, and I'll never be able to appear on it unless I suddenly learn how to speak Spanish, which I promised I would do this year, and so far i'm still up to hola well i will make sure i train you for at least one episode of my podcast i could use that Thank yeah i uh, you interested in knowing what some of the teams maybe who the yeah, teams are i think that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> kind of got a little quiet for a second i was like oh god here we go um so um from divine mercy parish we have los misioneros uh, from uh, Notre Dame de la Mer in Wildwood. They're called the Wild Woods. Uh, from St. Clair's in Sweetsboro, we have the Angels and Saints. From um, Our Lady Mount Carmel in Hamilton, we have Los Marianos. From St. Monica's, uh, they, they're called AC St. Monica. From Holy Cross in Bridgeton, we have uh, the Saints. Uh, also from Divine Mercy in Violin, we have the Catholic Millennial Ministry. Uh, and from Our Lady of Hope, Blackwood, um, St. Jude's Church, we have the team of St. Jude and uh, those are the guys teams and then for the women team uh, Notre Dame de la Mer again with the Wildwoods Atlantic City St. Monica's and a mixture of Violin and Bridgeton to be Las Misioneras uh, so again um, a few teams that are that, that have been together they've they've been checking in saying hey we've been doing this I know Hamilton had a pep rally uh, wow really yeah That's they had awesome. a pep rally for their team St. Jude's did uh, something special during the Sunday Mass um those are the types of things that I've been getting and, and hearing that that really make me happy because they get it. That was the yeah. point of this. Um, so uh, and that's you know that's really the beauty of this is that even though it's you know we're still a few days away from it going on, these teams have already been coming together and they're already mm-hmm. excited and they can't wait to be there. So it's not like and as we have you've noted and we've talked about as a part of the convocation, uh, the thing isn't the event. The event is that moment where we all get together. The thing is everything that happens after the event. Right. So I'm very excited to see how the office, uh, actually both offices, builds on on this soccer tournament. I mean, football tournament. Football tournament. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was great. I also love all the artwork. Even the artwork for it looks really good, too. Oh, thanks. That's yeah, nice. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that how, did, how did the colors... Uh, come about who, who, who decided what color like green? so the colors were fantastic and i think claudia is one of our victims of our color scheme here but the idea on on the team registration form that that we sent out we asked them you know color of the uniforms and if i got a registration form um 
I'm not going to use Claudia as an example, but like Claudia's team, <laughs> where it came in after another team, I had to call Claudia and say, hey, these colors are already taken. Uh, how about these colors? Those colors are already taken. So we, can, you know, that was that was part. Of, that was another fun part of of putting these teams because you get to have so much communication. And sometimes they're like, "Oh, that I really wanted that color." Well, yeah, so did the other team, and they mm. already got it. So, um, so Claudia, what color is your team? <laughs> now they've talked about all the colors you couldn't have. Well, we were going for a blue, a dark blue, and it was taken. A light blue, it was taken. And then we choose our. Um, there are part of our church colors, but we ended up with a yellow, bright. Uh, Brazilian type, so Ooh, we wow. we hope that rubs against our team, and we mm-hmm. oh yeah, <laughs> and we will go. So we ended up with yellow and green shorts, but it, I think yeah, it's it gonna look out. good. It, the Holy Spirit was meant to help us in that yeah. regards, you know. Yeah, that's a very classic look. look. You'll probably, if you guys win, I won't be shocked. Yeah, no, it's good. Go. They're gonna. It's, <laughs> it's gonna. It's Just gonna look good. Um, we have some dark blue with red. Oh, that's a good look color. Uh, light blue with black shorts. Uh, the yellow with the green shorts. Beige black shorts. Uh, white and blue, gold, black and white, uh, the green and white. Uh, we what, have a red team. What I think you need for next year is you need to have a diocesan team in black and gold. Because um, so we had, there are enough millennials in, in between Catholic charities and the diocesan offices and some of the other places that we and the ministries that you should be able to f- put together 12 to 15 players. I agree 100%. Yeah. So and there that, it is. That is the challenge to all our diocesan co workers for next year. Start getting your between running the shoes ages on of now. 18 and 39. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can help in different ways. So you can be the coach, you can be the coordinator, you can be the person that, you know, go and visit the young people to try to motivate them to be part of the team. I do like telling people what to do. That's a good idea. (laughs) You can be the coordinator. Although, make sure that it's football um, in the way that the ball goes rolling down, Mm -hmm. not throwing. Not throwing (laughs) throwing through the air. Uh, You know, I I only have one uh, skill set, and that's photography. So the one thing I'm very good at is sports photography, so I'll be your sports photographer. There There you go. go. That's it. How about you, Pete? I'm sure there's going to be good pictures there to be taken. No, I think that'd be fun. I think I can cheer. I'm good with enthusiastic cheering. And orange slices. What? And you'll bring the orange slices. I will. Yes, that's the thing. I'll be good with the uh, the after the after party celebration. I guess maybe. I'm off topic, but I couldn't help but notice the soul patch. Is that new? Yes, that is new. Where'd you get that from, Pete? I don't know. What? what do you mean you don't know I feel, I his face? I feel, well, I feel like I wore bow ties and then Pete wore bow ties and I've always had a soul patch. Now Pete has a soul patch. It's Are already you? hard I'm enough to tell no, it's just... already hard enough to tell us apart <laughs> and now he's wearing bow ties and has a soul patch. No, I You're stealing Jose's look? Not intentionally. Oh. Not intentionally. Just Jose, I remember uh, uh, that is the highest form of flattery is to to steal another person's look. So there's, there's not enough people <laughs> within our Wait, you don't no. have the soul patch anymore, though. It's, yeah, he does. I, I, had, I had to trim it down a little bit to make sure that my fire mask fit Always and stuff. Always focus, but, soccer, uh, tournament. <laughs> no, no, let the boys talk about their, their manscaping. Our, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, let me tell you something. You both look great. It's because we look As alike. Right, like that. <laughs> I think you're cute. Hermano, mi hermano. That's it. Mi amigo. All right. Well, I think we are going to wrap it up. So, any last thoughts as we go around the table? Jose, Marinella, Claudia. Just go and you know accompany us this uh, on this Saturday. It's going to be a beautiful day out. I think even for those who may not be soccer fans, you still are going to enjoy, uh, you know, the camaraderie. If I said that. Right, yeah, uh, Roger, you got it. <laughs> that was a hard one. Uh, so yeah, come on and join I'm us. I'm gonna do what I've been doing best, even around my parish and with my parishioners. I'm going to translate. Y lo invitamos a que venga al tornamento de fútbol de organizado por el Ministerio de Jóvenes y um, que pase un día familiar muy ameno. Que gane el mejor equipo. All right. Uh, the best team wins. <laughs> No, uh, um, no. My prayer is is all for the for the young people that are all going to come out and and spend their day with us. I hope that they all have an amazing time and that they're able to see Christ in one another through this, uh, and that 
may it be the first game of many games until the tournament next year. And again, a challenge. I like that, Mike. Challenge our coworkers. Yep. Uh, to be, let's uh, get your running shoes on, start taking the steps instead of the elevator, and let's get ready for next year. Yeah. You hear that, Marinella? Well, <laughs> did, did you hear that, Jose? I heard that. I'm already doing that. I'm telling him to do it. <laughs> okay. I heard it from inside the elevator. <laughs> Well, can I, can I, you talked about looking for music? Yes. Can please. I offer, I don't know, the Rocky music is always the tried and true oh, yeah. classic. Gonna fly okay. now. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm feeling the uh, the blues had a song. Email uh, me a few, Pete. Using. I'll take it. No, the, well, the blues had a song. Funny enough, the St. Louis Blues, sorry getting into the hockey, but they were in a bar in Philadelphia and they heard this song being played, Gloria by Lauren Burnigan. Mm-hmm. Good 80s song. Do you know that song, Mike? Well, Lar Brannigan, but yeah. Lar Brannigan, thank you. No problem. Just um, want to clarify. Yes, clarifying, <laughs> correcting. He always thing. have to. Um, no, but Gloria has been in my head. It's a it's a nice little ditty. Okay. If awesome. I can call it. It's good. So, uh, awesome. Claudia, take best. notes. I will take notes. <laughs> okay. Well, if you have any more suggestions for music, by all means, feel free to uh, suggest them at the uh, on social media underneath uh, when we post the, the podcast. So all of our social media outlets, uh, they'll be very interested to hear your topics. And uh, I'll just you know suggest a whole bunch of Metallica songs, but it'll be nice. And uh, for everybody, thank you very much for joining us today. For the listeners who tuned in, we very much appreciate it. And for anybody who may or may not be watching... Good to see you guys. Um, Thank you, Mike. No problem. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if all this stuff works out on video. But otherwise, thanks for coming. Thank you. Gracias. Our pleasure.